This week on TechWrap, Facebook launches a new project aimed at bringing internet connectivity to unconnected regions in the world. Never lose track of your wallet or keys again with TileApp. And it's smartphone camera shootout part two. The champion Samsung Galaxy S4 takes on a new challenger, the Nokia Lumia 925. Hi, I'm Michael Josh, and this is TechRap, your weekly source for tech news, gadget reviews, app recommendations, and social media tips. Today, the internet isn't accessible for two-thirds of the world. Imagine a world where it connects us all. This is the premise of a new initiative called Internet.org. The initiative is driven by Facebook founder and CEO Mark Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg calls the project a global partnership to overcome challenges faced by developing countries to join the knowledge economy. The founding members of Internet.org are Facebook, Ericsson, MediaTek, Nokia, Opera, Qualcomm, and Samsung. The group will focus on three key challenges, making access affordable, using data more efficiently, and helping businesses drive access. But the project is not limited to just partners. To quote the project's Twitter account, we're in this together. With only a third of our population online, there is also a big need to bring internet access to more Filipinos. For more information, you can visit www.internet.org. Under the same premise, in June, Facebook rival Google launched Project Loom, a network of balloons traveling on the edge of space designed to connect people in rural and remote areas. Nokia and Microsoft are taking their team up from smartphones to tablets. Technology news site The Verge reports Nokia is looking to release a Windows RT tablet at a special event in New York next month. Codenamed Vanguish, the tablet will be powered by Qualcomm's quad-core Snapdragon 800 processor and will have LTE connectivity. Chinese site Digiwo releases what could be leaked photos of the device, showing the back of a red 10.1-inch tablet. How will this tablet stack up with the iPad mini and the Nexus 7? We will find out soon enough. When it comes to smartphone displays, Full HD is the gold standard, with manufacturers battling out to pack in the most pixels per inch of the smartphones available today. The HTC One has the highest pixel density with 461 ppi, while the Xperia Z and the Samsung Galaxy S4 sport 441 ppi Full HD displays. But these may soon pale in comparison to one by Korea-based LG. This week, the company announces it has created the world's first quad HD smartphone display. The new 5.5-inch display has a resolution of 2,560 by 1,440. That's effectively 538 pixels per inch. At 1.21 millimeters thick, LG claims it's now the world's slimmest and narrowest panel. Want to get the most out of your smartphone's camera? While well, smartphone camera hybrids like the Samsung Galaxy S4 Zoom and the Nokia Lumia 1020 are taking smartphone imaging further, Sony is taking another route. The consumer electronics company is working on a smartphone accessory called a lens camera. The accessory looks like a DSLR camera lens attachable to a smartphone. The lens includes a 1-inch 20.2 megapixel sensor and an f1.8 Carl Zeiss lens. Reports say it will support Android and iOS devices and will convert the smartphone's display to a viewfinder. This week, a leaked manual posted on Sony Alpha Rumors reveal more details. A built-in display that shows information like battery levels and how much free space you have left on your SD card. More reports say Sony is prepping two models for the launch of the device. The higher-end model will be called the QX100 and will have a manual focus ring. The lower-end model will be called the QX10. Four to 5.2 inches. Yes, I'm talking about display sizes. Following the release of its 5.8 and 6.3 inch Galaxy Mega smartphones, which are larger than the 5 inch Galaxy S4 and the 5.5 inch Galaxy Note 2, South Korean company Samsung is working on phones the other side of the scale, from 4 inches all the way to 5.2 inches. Sam Mobile tracked down these yet to be known devices. The model numbers and display sizes are on your screen 
but their actual names are yet to be available. It's no surprise that Samsung is coming up with another set of smartphones with varying sizes. It's a strategy that's proven to be effective for them after being named the top smartphone manufacturer in the world. Have you ever lost your keys or your wallet and wished you could ring it like you could your mobile phone? Soon, this will be possible thanks to a self-starter project called Tile App, dubbed the world's largest lost and found. Tile App is one of those ideas you wished you thought of yourself and a device that has got me real excited even before it started shipping. While the concept is pretty straightforward, there aren't any similar products in the market today. So let's try to describe it for you, shall we? Tile is a thin, white, Bluetooth-enabled tracking device the size of a one peso coin that helps you find lost items. Each tile has a hole on its side and comes with double-sided adhesive. There are several possible ways to use it. You can drop it into your bag or wallet, stick it onto your gadget, or use it as you would a keychain. You can even stick it onto larger items like a bike. Using the free Tile app for iOS, you can pinpoint the location of your Tile-attached lost item within a 150-foot range. If you still can't find it, make your tile ring and track it down by sound. You can add up to 10 tiles onto one account and give your friends and family access to your tiles. Once you mark your tile is lost, the tile community can help you find it. Other users with the tile app installed will keep an eye out for it. And if it shows up within 50 to 150 feet of someone's tile, it will pinpoint the location for you and send you a notification. What's magical about this is once there are enough tile users, the range becomes limitless. Tile is crowdfunded on the open source platform Self-Starter. Online news site New Public Radio says more than 200,000 tiles have been pre-ordered as of August 7. Both the upside and downside of the device is its battery. We like how it doesn't need any charging, but it only lasts for one year. After that, you'll be reminded to purchase a new tile. It ships to the US, Canada, and New Zealand in the fourth quarter of 2013 or early next year. You can now pre-order online for $18.95 but you'll have to arrange for it to be shipped to a valid address. According to its website, Tile will be available for shipping to other countries in the future. Let's hope it includes the Philippines. A few weeks back, we reviewed the Nokia Lumia 925, which arguably is one of the best cameras in a smartphone today. If you recall, also a few episodes back, we put the HTC One, the iPhone 5, and the Samsung Galaxy S4 in a head-to-head -head smartphone camera shootout. You can watch that video by clicking up here. In that tech rap battle, the winner was the S4. But a lot of you asked, where's Nokia? What about the Lumia 920 or the 925? Well, while we still have the 925, we put both phones to the challenge to see which one does better. Check out the results. We barely saw the sun during our test period with the Lumia 925, so this test is limited by our ability to take photos under cloudy conditions at best. Outdoor shots like this one, for example, was a toss-up between both phones. Against the light, the Lumia 925 captured details in the sky better. As seen in this photo, only the Lumia 925 is able to capture the clouds. The sky is just white on this shot by the S4. But our other shot went the way of the Galaxy S4. It appears that the 925 adjusts contrast to compensate for bright lighting conditions. In this shot, the shadows are stronger, whereas the S4 produced crisp, more color-accurate images. Color accuracy is the S4's strong suit. In these photos, the S4 produced vibrant colors, while the Lumia 925 did great also, but white balance was off. Just like in our previous smartphone shootout, the S4 outdid the Lumia 925 in terms of macro shots. Again, the 925's photos were on the bluish side. The 13 megapixel S4 also trumps the 8.7 megapixel Lumia 925 in terms of ability to zoom. From the same distance, zoom photos in the S4 capture more detail than the 925. But low light is where the Lumia 925 shines. Take a look at these night shots we took on a very rainy day. There is no contest here. Color accuracy and detail are superb on the Lumia 925. Equally as good, but slightly better on this macro shot. And even if the S4 captures more detail when the sun is still out, once light goes down to a certain level, Lumia 925 takes over. Overall, taking four rounds out of seven, the Samsung Galaxy S4 is still the winner of this smartphone camera shootout. But if low light photos are a priority, then you should highly consider Nokia Lumia 925. 
And that was Tech Wrap. For the latest news updates, follow Rappler.com on social media. We're on Twitter, Facebook, Google+, and Instagram. I also don't mind being your 24-7 tech hotline, so if you're in the market for a new device, send me an email. It's techwrap at rapper.com. I'd love to help you out. Join our conversation on Twitter using the hashtag TechRap. And if you're looking for old episodes, you can visit our website. It's rappler.com slash techwrap. That's all for this week, folks. I'm Michael Josh. Thanks for dropping by.